So good morning. Um, it's my pleasure and a great privilege to be here this morning in Belgrade. Um, it was very interesting to listen to the presentations before, um, especially when I look at the agenda that uh, Minister Matic laid out for us. I think um, that we all can be convinced that um, this is a great journey for Serbia to become not only part of the internet economy, but be an a important player in the internet economy in this region moving forward. So what I want to do is um, build on this and paint a picture of what the future from a technology point of view might look like, in our view, in the next decade. Not just on a global basis, but again with all the investment that we're doing here in terms of the agenda of the ministry as well as some of the important investments that uh, Telecom in Serbia is doing, we do believe that there's um, an impact not just on a global scale but also here for Serbia and I want to um, go into that. Now we all know that times are not easy and I think we heard that a couple of times uh, this morning how economy is troubled but we do believe that technology can help businesses to overcome some of that um, trouble or some of the problems we face. Now, um, one, oops, sorry, that was the wrong one. Okay. Now, it's interesting if you look at into technology on a broad perspective, we can say that there has always been eras of innovation and eras of transformation through technology. Um, it started in the 90s with the race of the personal computing and the PC. And so that brought a tremendous productivity to economies because people were starting to get productive on their uh, personal computers with uh, desktop software, with office software. They started to communicate with each other through the PC. Then we had, um, in the middle of the 90s, the race of the internet. And it was a phenomenon because people uh, we're starting to share information uh, without any boundaries. Um, then um, in 2000, we started this decade of web services so that uh, no longer was the internet only used to look into information or to publish information, but it became sort of interactive. And people were using the internet as a means to communicate with each other with rich content. We do believe that we are now entering a new decade and a new transformation. And this transformation can be best described as cloud computing. What cloud computing really means is that businesses as well as consumers are taking advantage of the mass of power of storage and computing power in the internet. Because today, typically, we see boundaries no matter if you're a private user or if you're a business, because you have to deploy everything your own and you have to invest capital in information technology to scale up. With cloud computing, you can take advantage of the existing investments on a worldwide basis that, uh, that exist in terms of computing power and storage, and therefore you can decrease your capital footprint that you need to scale out. And we think in these economy times, that we have, this is an important aspect. Now, if you think about cloud computing, we do not believe it's a, oops, it's a black and white game. So we don't believe that everything, meaning all applications, all the computing power will be moved into the internet. In reality, there are still good reasons why businesses and consumers want to deploy software on their devices, meaning on your notebook or even on your mobile phone or on servers. One reason might be that no matter how much we invest in the infrastructure, there will be times and there will be scenarios where you don't have access to the internet or at least you don't have the connectivity that requires to compute everything through the internet. I mean, personally, I can always take the Example, when I'm flying to Belgrade and I'm on a plane, I don't have internet connection. You might say, 
yet, but I still think there's an argument that I will be in times or I will be in scenarios where I don't have internet access, therefore I do want to have computing power on my PC. Or think about businesses and you're in the financial sector. You might say, well, we actually do want to keep some critical information on our servers and we don't want to move that critical information to the internet. Think about governments, of course. There's also critical data that you still want to keep and applications you still want to keep on your premise. But again, there's good reasons why you also want to take advantage of the internet and you want to consume services that are provisioned through the internet. So again, it's not about being black and white and this is exactly what Microsoft calls software plus service and that's our strategy. In fact, we are not alone. So software plus service is a phenomenon across the industry. I just take a few examples. Think about Apple uh, in the consumer space. You have iTunes, which is basically a music service. However, you still have software that sits on your device, meaning your iPod or your computer. So you run software and then you connect to the internet and you download music as a service. Or even think about classical internet companies such as Google. Google Earth as well as Google Apps, they still require that some component of the software sits on your premise, meaning on your computer, and then you connect to the service. So it's really an industry trend that we combine software and service as a comprehensive future way how we uh, consume applications. Now, to demonstrate that a bit more in a, let's say, practical sense, um, let's look into how you can consume email and collaboration services such as Microsoft Exchange. Because I think with that example, it probably becomes a bit more practical. So if you think about Microsoft Exchange, it is an email service and a collaboration platform. Now, there are different ways how you can consume that service, meaning that messaging service and that collaboration service. You can either say, well, I want to have Office Outlook classically being installed on my PC, on the premise. You could say, no, I want to access Outlook through the internet, so no matter where I am, even if I'm on holidays and I just have a PC in an internet cafe, I can access my Outlook and my email account in a secure way through the web access. Or I say, no, 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 I want to access my email and my calendar through my mobile devices, or even through voice access. And here you see a practical example of how we can combine software and service. So for you as an end user, it's completely seamless. No matter where you are, no matter what device you're using, you still have one view of your messages and the collaboration platform that we uh, provision through Exchange. 